Hello my friends, welcome to episode 18. This will be the deployment episode for Compass and Tunisia, but before we get to that, if you remember in the last episode, I said um, that I was just going to move a unit to uh, the exit quickly to just see if the level just magically ends, and it did. It just magically ended. Now I should probably come back here and farm EXP on the last turn. The only thing is, it actually doesn't make any sense to bother farming EXP on the last turn, and I will kind of explain why. Um, so if you remember, my strategy timing is always impeccable. was to get my uh, Damler Dingo to level 2 so I could buy the upgrade that automatically makes all units... Um, automatically makes all units level 1. And it works exactly as you would expect. It rounds up all of your units to level 1. Now there's some interesting things in the EXP system which I have noted. So here, the Dingo has 99, 199 EXP. You get 1 EXP for damage and 10 for losing strength during an attack. So you see here I could um, there are plenty of units here in which I could do like one damage and take one in return. So the answer, so what should happen is I should get 11 EXP, one for the damage and 10 for taking damage. Engaging the enemy. There we go. But if I level, so now I've maxed out, if I level this, let's add terrain expert because this is quite an easy unit to kill. Okay, so, if I then go back here, you will see that there is 10 EXP added to the bar. But, as, as you're about to find out when I, when I finish this mission and, and buy the, uh, the level 1 skill, uh, units that were below level Tank 1, ready for action. Just, they just have their EXP rounded up to... Uh, they just have their EXP rounded up to uh, level 1. So, effectively, there is no point in using any units that are below level 1. Because they'll all become level 1. And some units are incredibly difficult to actually level up. So, got a clear shot. This tank is already level 1, so it's worth getting the experience. Ready to flatten some fools. This is not my vehicle, so it won't be coming with me. Ready to flatten some fools. These units are all level one. This unit is not mine. This unit is not mine. Form up, form up. Uh, these are my Gurkhas, and they're worth getting some EXP on. Prepare to die. Because God they're save already the king. level one. Remember, you have to take damage to gain the 10 EXP bonus. So I could snipe this guy for 1 HP, but it actually doesn't make sense for me to do that. If I want the experience points, for king and country, I need to take the battle that actually deals damage to me. Whether it's suppression or lethal damage, it doesn't matter. British infantry reporting. Okay. Infantry standing by. That's not one infantry of mine. awaiting That's not orders. One of mine. And none of my other units are level 1, I believe. So that's it. There's no point in doing any of the others because where do you need us? Double file, boys. They'll immediately General become Brooke, level one, and the they evacuation won't, is over. Most they won't keep any experience points. Okay, so we saw all that in the last episode. So, you know, just a quick note here on EXP farming. You don't get. What's the best way of putting this? A mission can go on and on and on forever. You just get punished with these victory points. And these victory points do unlock some very nice things, so that's good. But in theory, you could, um... Because it's so difficult to, to level certain units, 
You could decide on one mission to just not bother with victory points, but to actually just farm the enemy as much as possible um, by by taking damage, basically by attacking and taking damage. Um, and it would probably, in the long run, save you a lot of victory points because you wouldn't need to buy this. Although this does have the advantage that. Uh, uh, fr fresh units that you buy also come leveled up. But it's just a thought in my head. Okay, so I've got 11,006 prestige, and you can see here, look, that all the units that weren't level 1 are now level 1. So let's go and do our level ups. I really like this tank line ability. That means that you can make a wall of tanks and they're going to defend each other. I also really like this street fighter thing as well. But we'll go with tank line because I think that works best if every unit has it. And also helps me to move away from anti-tank guns which so far have been quite underwhelming. The old biz Which seems to be pretty similar statistically to the Tilly. Um, the Tilly is slightly better against vehicles, whereas the biz uh, and slightly tougher. The biz uh, seems to be better against infantry. Oh, one other thing that I discovered while prepping for this deployment episode is that level ups actually give you plus two to your soft stats. So, plus two to hard defense, plus two to air defense, soft attack, and hard attack. So, something to keep in mind is that levels are actually seriously impacting the strength of your unit as well. Okay, defender is just really the most important skill for all support units. Only being able to support once is kind of naff. Being able to support at least three times is much better. Which kind of makes non-level one units really quite poor. You know, since overstrength is free, I don't understand why... Is it free? Actually. No, it's not free. Okay. I was going to say, why not just over strength automatically? It's because it's not free. Ha <laughs> ha. Ha ha. Finally got a defender and all my anti tank guns, which is good. Forced march. Obviously, forced march, really important for. Uh, infantry so that they can move around without using their transports in critical situations now interestingly I don't know how I feel about aircraft um, defender is kind of an obvious choice for a fighter because it then allows you to fend off three enemy planes instead of just one. Of course it does mean that the enemy will just probably go for your fighter directly instead of going for your bombers, but I guess that can work out. Um, but in terms of bombers... You know, it's... There's nothing, nothing that really screams, you know, overpowered or really, you know, must have. 
I do like the idea of tactical retreat. Being able to move away three hexes instead of one after an attack. That could probably allow for some much cleaner positioning. But I also like the idea of swift strike. Being able to dodge support fire is pretty good for a bomber. Anyway, it's definitely not going to rain in the desert, so I think we can skip all weather for now. So seal the deal also seems pretty... pretty reasonable. I mean, it's marginal. Probably the hard attack would be better, straight up. Ammo, fuel, they're all like marginally useful, but they're all sort of level in how marginally useful they are. There's nothing that screams amazing. I think I like the idea of the tactical retreat, actually. Positioning is really one of the most important things in a, in a strategy game. Right, now all of these infantry are, are glowing with possible upgrades along with the um, hurricane. But uh, there's nothing I would really want to upgrade it to. You're better off buying units fresh. And that's the thing, now I can buy units that are level 1. Why would I, why would I upgrade an existing unit? Okay, there's the possibility to upgrade a maximum of two units to commandos. But once again, you do not get any kind of refund. Well, you get a half price refund. So, you know, at this exact moment, it's probably. you're probably better off just buying fresh commandos and thus having more units. The, uh, the cost of upgrading for most units is really very penalizing. Oh, I have, don't think I will have unlocked any heroes yet. Conserve in tank. Deal 60 damage to tanks. You know that last mission I could have done a lot more tank on tank action and actually probably climbed this bar up a bit but that was a rough mission as well so I wonder how this works because I'm pretty sure that my infantry have done more damage to ground units ah it's based on the unit I'm sure each hero can only be used once, right? So... Infantry or Recon. Ha ha! So interestingly, it is, it's per unit. I'm pretty sure that there will be no cloning machine. You will not be able to just put, put infinite heroes. I thought it was weird. I thought it was weird that it was like, do 60 damage to tanks. I'm like, I thought I've done way more than that. Okay, alright. So that leaves 617 prestige to actually buy something. Um, and it's obvious to me that what I should do is replace my artillery. At 
311 per piece. I could probably get another one later as well. Comes with a transport, which is always nice. This deadly is actually really good. But I also really want the fire support. Right. We're sort of almost done, however. Oh, excuse me. Okay, advance. So this is Operation Compass. Advance on Torbrook. And take command of the Living Host. Desert terrain. So I think what we're going to want to do as well is change our equipment to um, change our equipment to sand filters. Splat. We held our ground and repelled the German raids against the British Isles. Our gallant Royal Air Force has overcome the vainglorious Luftwaffe. The heart of the British Empire is safe for now. Our coastal defences are fully prepared to repel any invasion. If the Germans decide to attack, it will be a one-way trip for them. One-way trip! For the last few months, our focus has been defence. Now that we are more or less secure, I believe it's time to go on the offensive. Indeed. Our forces can now take a more active role in the global conflict, as they well should. General Brooke, brief us on the North Africa situation. Our troops were forced to retreat, but right now the front is leveled out. As we speak, my staff is working on a plan for a surprise offensive against the Italians. Good. Good. The Italians' Why tanks are garbage. Why don't we send Sir Harold to take charge? This will be fun. We could, but, uh, I think the current commander is more than capable of carrying out the operation. Still, Sir Harold might do well in an advisory role. As someone who's actually fought the Germans, I would gladly advise someone who hasn't. <laughs> of course, if needed, I'm ready to take charge. Zing. But you must understand. One can't take the responsibility without the company and authority. Well put, Sir Harold. Very well. Take command of our forces in Africa and do away with the Italians. Like you just did with Sir Alan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it! It's so vicious! <laughs> General Alexander, the Italian invasion of Egypt cannot go unanswered. The numbers are on their side, but our men are better equipped and trained. It is time we retaliate. During the course of Operation Compass, you must capture Bardia, Tobruk, Derna, Mikhil, Tobruk, isn't it? Masus, Benghazi, and Beta Fum. If possible, capture the enemy commander alive. It's Marshal Rodolfo Graziani. According to MI6, he has a temporary headquarters in Mikili. The Butcher of Ethiopia? I hear his forces used mustard gas during the campaign there. Disgraceful. I've seen the effects of that thing up close in the previous war, and you're suggesting we capture him? Scum like Graziani belong before the firing squad. Hold your horses, Bernard. We all remember <laughs> the Great War. But Marshal Graziani may have some useful intel regarding the Italian strategy. Besides, we can use him to ingratiate ourselves with Ethiopia when the war is over. Or with Italy after they surrender. In short, we'll have plenty of ways to put him to good use. And if not, he'll face the firing squad after all. Let me repeat <laughs> that. We need Rodolfo Graziani alive. No aviation or artillery during his capture. Don't give Sir Winston more fuel for his bobs. All right. I have some auxiliaries, but it looks like this mission finally is going to be more or less a core unit affair. We have... Oh yeah, I forgot. You can't see how many turns you've got. 
on uh, on this screen, sadly. Tank ready for action. Now, what I'm looking for here is I want to understand what the sandstorm penalty is. I commander. The terrain is going to be sandy. Does that indicate that I am going to need sand filters on this Just mission? Just tell us where to go. None of the deployed units have got sand protection. From what I can see, none of the... Uh, None of the existing guns of the United Kingdom. Existing stuff has got sand filtering, so maybe it's unnecessary for this mission in particular. I was just—I was got always a job for a tank. I was always interested in the uh, uh, this air filter. Remove sandstorm attack penalties. You know, because you don't offer someone special equipment unless uh, it's going to be horrible to be on the receiving end of it. But I don't know. Tank squadron reporting. That's the issue. Any orders for us? As always, the issue is that I don't know. Let's get this guy tooled up with some, some units, uh, with some stuff. Pretty cheap to install that suite. On His Majesty's service. I guess I'm just going to leave my army as it is. Speaking of special Locked equipment, and loaded. I'm not going to bother with artillery special equipment because none of it seems to be that useful. 80 prestige is actually quite expensive. Although I guess I'm not really going to spend much prestige right this minute, so... Why not? We can go for the ammo and the uh, sappers. I'm certainly not a fan of spending prestige to shoot. Okay, alright. This looks like a simple... A uh, simple push from right to left operation. His Majesty's own disappointment. So, I'm not expecting anything to be too difficult. We use my sniper squads to... Um, harass enemy infantry in cities, uh, crushing their stats so that we can then just move in with the heavy metal and destroy everything. I've got enemy units in my face here as well, but that's probably not going to be too difficult to deal with. Any orders for us? Okay. Big Calibre standing by. Big Calibre. Ready for action, I think. I have no idea what kind of air power the Italians are going to have, but the Italians typically did not we'll have get it done. the best units. Any orders for us? Guarding the Empire. I spy with my little eye. The Italians basically got crushed in World War II. I wouldn't mind building up the prestige to buy a couple of sets of those commandos God as well at king. some point. His Majesty's own disappointment. Tommies are here. I wonder if I can load the paratroopers up in the airport. British infantry reporting. Okay. That leaves my hurricane. 
And the bombers. Oops. Okay, I mean, it's not, I, you know, not really got much choice of where to deploy here either, let's be honest. So, uh, pretty much pushing the limits of how many units I can actually deploy on the first turn here. I only actually had one spot left, which is probably where that artillery I lost would have sat. Okay, lots of towns to take, so hopefully plenty of time to do it. Okay, we got Italian fire bomber. An artillery fort on the coast, but facing inwards. That's interesting. Locked and loaded. Sadly, if I had the extra range ability, I could uh, I could hit that. I might be able to carpet bomb it though. That's an anti-aircraft gun, isn't it? It's got to be. Yep. But it won't stop the carpet bomber. You need more than one anti-aircraft gun to stop it. Carpet bomber. Could really do with some naval support on this mission. But I'm thinking that I would just carpet bomb this using my command points. Just carpet bomb this into the dust. And then uh, I'll be able to sweep in. Not concerned about these concrete forts because they can't attack hard. They're purely machine gun nests. And Italian tanks are laughable. So, I'm pretty sure that their, uh, their utter ineffectualness has been m accurately modeled in this game. <laughs> Man. They, the, the Italians had literally nothing that could pen Matildas. Historically, Matildas just... They call them the queens of the desert. They just... Uh, just just totally wrecked Italian tank formations. Couldn't do anything to them. De almost depressingly one-sided. But anyway, that is it for now. That is it for deployment. Gonna have to do something about these aircraft here and that. I don't think any Over of my anti aircraft That's guns they can said. reach either. One, two, three, four. Uh, if you were here, one, two, three, four. No, just out of reach. Extended range would have been useful, but I uh, felt it was more important to get the uh, triple, triple air defense ability first. So, it's going to be a rough little assault here, I think. Because these things are are really nasty. Okay, alright. Deployment complete. I'll see you guys next time.